Our scripture reading today comes from the Old Testament, the first book of the Bible, Genesis 3.1. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God actually say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden. Neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. Also from the book of Proverbs, chapter 12, verse 22, the Lord detests lying lips, but he delights in people who are trustworthy. And in the New Testament, John 8, 32, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25. So stop telling lies. Let us tell our neighbors the truth, for we are all parts of the same body. Recently, I was introduced to an old Czech proverb, better a lie that soothes than a truth that hurts. When I heard it, I thought it sounded beautiful and complex. Like many other people, I'm guilty of telling lies that I believed were harmless and unimportant, just as my parents had told me lies to shield and protect me from the harsh truths of an evil world. I also did the same for my children. A, a man named Santa Claus magically enters our home and brings us presents at Christmas, kids. Oh, the tooth fairy will come and take that tooth that you lost today from under your pillow. And in the morning, you'll find money there. If you cross your eyes, they'll stay that way. And if you swallow bubble gum, it'll plug you up and kill you. And babies are especially delivered by storks. And pets that die go to a sunny, peaceful farm. There they play all day with all your other pets that died. Now I wonder, are we better off for having believed these, or did they really shield us? Or did they just delay our understanding of the world and create our first inklings of distrust? This proverb, a lie that soothes better than a truth that hurts, doesn't sound so beautiful anymore. I, I believe the truth is always better. While some lies appear to soothe, it's only for a brief time. It's only a matter of time before the truth comes out, and with the truth comes the hurt and pain. It always does. No matter how uncomfortable the truth is, it sets you free. Truth, addressed and delivered with care, is much better than a lie no matter how small it may seem, the lie will always cause more hurt in the end. Today we're going to dive into the uncomfortable yet liberating truth about truth itself. You, you, you heard me right. The, the truth about truth. Because sometimes the truth hurts. But no worry, for in that hurt lies the potential for healing and our redemption. In the Garden of Eden, the first recorded lie was told to Eve by Satan in the form of a serpent. Satan was on a mission to destroy God's beautiful creation. And so he tempted Eve with questions about God, what God had said, and then he lied to her. And, and here's a definition of a lie. A lie is a, an untrue statement with the intent to deceive. And this is what the serpent said in Genesis 3. You'll not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of it, the forbidden fruit, your eyes will be open and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. Satan's lie led to mankind's fall from innocence and introduced sin into the world. Jesus spoke about the devil in John chapter 8, 44. 
He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there's no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. These days we live in a world where dishonesty has become the norm, where truth is often sacrificed on the altar of expediency. We're surrounded by liars. According to a recent study by the University of Massachusetts, when the average person is trying to appear likable and competent, they'll tell three lies in a 10-minute conversation. Three lies. Now that's a staggering statistic that speaks volumes about the prevalence of dishonesty in our society. According to current research, by age four, 90% of children have grasped the concept of lying, and it just gets worse from there. 40% of people lie on their job resumes. 90% of people who are looking for an online date will lie in their profile. Men and women both lie equally. Women lie more about their weight and age, but they're also more likely to lie to make the person they're talking to feel better, feel good. Men lie most often to make themselves look better, saying they are richer or better educated than they really are. It's a statistical fact that we all lie, some a lot more than others. And whether it's a little lie, a big lie, a whopper, or a simple shading of the truth lie by withholding critical information, a lie is a lie. Sometimes the truth hurts, but a lie always causes more hurt in the end. If you've ever been lied to, you're familiar with the feelings of disrespect, betrayal, and insecurity it brings. And what you thought was true is gone, completely discredited. It seems like the person that did the lying to you doesn't value or respect you enough to tell you the truth. And oh, how this hurts. Just think of the countless relationships shattered by deceit and the trust that's been broken beyond repair, wounds caused that never fully heal. At its core, truth built, truth telling builds trust. It strengthens relationships and, and it upholds our moral integrity. When we speak truthfully, we build a foundation of honesty upon which meaningful relationships can develop and thrive. You may have a friend who's straightforward and always tells it like it is, even when the truth is uncomfortable. Talking to you, their words may sting in the moment, but their unwavering honesty ultimately deepens the bond of trust between you two. You value and appreciate such a friend because you know they're not deliberately trying to hurt your feelings. They want to bring out the best in you by tactfully telling you the truth about your shortcomings. They know and hope that by confronting your failings head on, you'll learn from your mistakes and become a better person. One night, Simon Peter boasted to Jesus that he would never forsake him. But before daybreak, he abandoned Jesus and three times denied even knowing him. Almost at once, his lies were confronted by the truth of his betrayal, and he wept bitterly. Wept and repented, and then later he reconciled with the risen Savior. Peter then went on to become a foundational figure of the Christian church. Perhaps this led to his great anger at Ananias and Sapphira for trying to lie to God in Acts chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. They thought they could pull a fast one on the apostles, but tragically their lies were their undoing. They paid the price. Their deceit cost them their reputations and their very lives. We've seen many people caught in their lies. President Richard Nixon lied about being part of a conspiracy in a break-in at the Democratic headquarters. Instead of telling the truth, he chose the path of lying and deception. Consequently, he lost his credibility 
and finally in shame and disgrace he resigned from being president. His name was forever blackened by his lies. Lance Armstrong was the cycling sensation who won the Tour de France a record seven consecutive times from 1999 to 2005. Although he was often accused of using performance enhancing drugs, Armstrong always denied doing so. An investigation found that he actually had used drugs over his entire career and consequently he was stripped of all of his titles and in 2013 Armstrong finally admitted the truth that he had lied about using drugs. He had used them and consequently he was banned for life from all sanctioned bicycling events and he had to pay $5 million to the U.S. government in fines. Lies have a way of catching up with us, and they hurt us much more than we ever could imagine. So always tell the truth. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we realize that you're the way, the truth, and the life. Please keep us on the pathway of doing right. Let us always tell the truth. Help us to shun lying and deception. In Jesus' name, amen. Points to ponder. Have you ever been in a situation when telling the truth hurt you? What happened? And how might understanding that God gives eternal rewards help motivate you to tell the truth? Proverbs 12, 22, the Lord detests lying lips but he delights in those who tell the truth. And Psalm 34, 13, then keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. <laughs>